If that was taken away tomorrow, would you be okay? The answer is no, then you've found identity in that. And your identity isn't in that. Mm -hmm. Your identity is rooted in heaven. Lord, I am being called to surrender everything to you. My lifestyle, my friends, my car, my job, my community, my dreams, my my future career, my school, my house, my dog. Literally, if I walk away from this relationship and I be fully present to you and fully trust you, everything that I knew, everything that I had planned, is going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's do this. If you're living for Christ, we're not gonna look like what the world thinks we should look like. Yeah. We should stand out. Welcome to the Exposing Catholic Show, where we expose the lives, interactions, and stories of Catholics. Our guest today is Catherine Zicker. Hello. Welcome, huh? <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me. This of is really course. fun. I'm super excited. So the topic of the discussion that we wanted to have today is more so living for the world mm -hmm. than transitioning into living for Christ. Very relatable. So <laughs> how does that like relate to you? How do you yeah. start? How did you start that journey? Yeah. Um, so I grew up as a cradle Catholic here in Ohio and a very Catholic family, which was fantastic. I feel very blessed to have that. Um, but then once I went to college, uh, looking back, I definitely had one foot in the world, one foot in heaven kind of thing, like mm -hmm. almost like two people in that sense where I was going to the Newman Center. That was one version of me, right? Mm -hmm. But then as soon as mass was over, or like Bible study was over, then I would go back to partying and just like constantly seeking that happiness because we are created for joy. We are created for that heavenly eternal type of joy. So the desires that I was seeking after, um, I think that's pretty normal to do, but we live in a broken world. So if we're chasing after happiness that the world is telling us will fulfill us, then it, we're never going to be fulfilled and mm -hmm. that's exactly kind of what what i was doing yeah mm -hmm. so being in college like what were like the crowd that you were hanging around like <laughs> yeah like yeah. what was that like yeah i think i think living ch constantly chasing like um having a joy and a father who is constant that is something that we are seeking and we're made for but in college I was seeking this joy in the world so like the people that I was hanging out with is like oh like if you come to this party then you'll be happy if mm -hmm. you start dating this guy then those insecurities are gonna go away and then you start dating this guy and those insecurities don't go away you go to that party and you leave feeling more empty than Mm -hmm. you went in and so the people I was hanging out I mean good people I definitely had a good friend group in college no doubt but um the outside external factors were just creating separate identities in a sense like mm -hmm. I was yeah I was one person with my close group of friends um who were in the College of Arts, uh, that that's where I was studying. So I had a close group of friends there that we related on music and the art and everything. But then when I would go out partying or whatever, I had a whole totally different version of myself that was mm -hmm. just constantly seeking, seeking, seeking. And then at the Newman Center, I had a different friend group. And I, I, I really did, looking back, have this um same mentality even back in high school where i would be different people for different friend groups constantly seeking mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. looking to fulfill those desires that the good true and beautiful desires right but really not not finding that that fulfillment because i'm not looking in the right places mm -hmm. um and you know we're meant to we're created to be the most authentic whole versions of ourselves and that identity that's never changing can only be found in one place but i didn't i didn't fully accept that identity i think 
I found that bits and pieces, obviously throughout my life for sure, but I didn't claim that identity until the past few years when the Lord really was like, how much longer <laughs> are you going to be seeking this joy that you are going to be seeking this fulfillment in mm -hmm. a world that cannot comfort you, in a mm -hmm. world that mm -hmm. cannot fulfill those desires? When are you going to come up for air and seek this, uh, this, this life that I can give you? I am the life source. I am the way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, that my friend group in college <laughs> got, a, got a little tangent there. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to college in Kentucky, yeah. but you okay. lived in <laughs> Ohio. So you yeah. didn't have like your family down yeah. where you were. Like, did that make any sort of difference on like, you know, yeah. oh, I'm just by myself. Like right. my parents aren't there anymore. I think so. Part of moving away was, if I'm being honest, I liked to run from things totally. Like, like if I messed up enough, then I was like, I need a clean start. And I would mm. flee and get as far as away as possible as I could. Like in, I grew up at a really small private Catholic school and then everybody knew everything about me there, you know? And I was like, I'm done with this. I want a clean start, new start. I went to a big public high school, didn't know anybody. Um, that was like running, right? Tried to create a new identity for myself. Again, that seeking, that living for the world type of uh, trying to find fulfillment there. But then it's high school. There's a lot that goes on in high school. High school isn't easy. And a lot of mistakes made as well, naturally. But then it was like, okay, college is here. Like I need a fresh start. Mm -hmm. I need to be away from everyone. I'm going to find myself. And so I go out of state as far as I could, as I, as I could you know, get, uh, which was Kentucky, not too far, seven hours, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just kept, I, there was this pattern of, okay, I, I don't want to face my wounds. I don't want to face my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I don't want to face those mistakes because I'm ashamed of those, which is definitely the voice of Satan. Um, I don't want to face the problems that I've either have or caused I want to just keep you know going forward going forward and I wasn't allowing myself to see where Christ was in all of that which we'll get into a little bit later <laughs> but he, he he's so good and heals so many so many places um but yeah moving away from college it was like okay I I can't face my family mm -hmm. and it, it's not like I did anything crazy it's just the the lies the voice of Satan being like Oh, you, you sinner, <laughs> you've yeah. done it again. You've messed up again. How yeah. nobody's going to love you. Your family's not going to accept you. Your friends aren't going to like you. Mm -hmm. So you need to start over again. And so this constant theme of running and seeking and trying to start over and over and, and just eventually it caught up to me. Jesus finally just stood in front of me and was like, hello please stop. Let me love you. I want to love all of you, including all of this back stuff. Like, like all those things you don't like about yourself that you're running from, that you don't think your friends are going to like, your family's not going to accept. I love all of that about you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew you were going to do it and I'm going to love you through it because I don't like the sin, but I love you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, that definitely came in these later years. Mm -hmm. Praise God. <laughs> so when you're in college, like were you in for four years? Yeah. Okay. Four years. So, I did a year or two in, in Europe. I went to oh, Italy. Oh, fun. Which was Can really good. Can we hear good. about that? <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I would just want to know. Story. <laughs> I actually, that's another way. I wasn't running from anything. I definitely have that dream of performing and I have a degree mm -hmm. in opera. So I went to Italy to perform and I've, I've been blessed to perform in like 10 different countries now and that was really cool. Um, learning Italiano, which was really fun. Um, but I, I, again, there were some things like freshman year, I was making a lot of silly college rookie mistakes and um, getting involved with the wrong crowd for sure. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to Europe. I'm going to go as far away as possible. But uh, yeah, Europe was great. I really would love to go back, go to Italy, travel again. Who knows where the Lord's going to take us, you know? <laughs> so you're in Italy and then obviously you came back. Yes. So. <laughs> yep. I came back right before 
the world shut down with COVID. Oh my gosh. Great timing. Yeah, um, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting, like speaking of identity, I, so I have a degree in opera. Freshman year, I was like, riding this wave of success you know any comp vocal competition i was doing i was placing i was winning i was you know and just getting very prideful and it got mm. to the point truly where people would ask me like like oh who like who are you oh i'm Catherine. i'm a singer i sing mm -hmm. my identity is that i'm a singer i i sing mm. i sing this i'm a musician you know i'm a performer i'm a singer that's my identity um but then when I went to Europe and uh, my voice started getting pretty raspy before I left, it was getting raspy. But I was thinking like, oh, I just need to rest, go to Europe, getting worse and worse and worse. Finally, to the point where by the time I came back to the States, I had no voice, like completely gone. Um, I went uh, to see a couple different uh, throat doctors where mm -hmm. they did a vocal scope. And at first they thought it was just nodules, but um just from the extensive amount of performing that I was doing. So I went through a year of vocal therapy to get rid of those nodules. And then once that all went away, they found that there was a vocal cyst. And so it wasn't actually anything mm -hmm. that I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, it was just luck of the draw. I got a cyst, but I had to have surgery to have this cyst removed. And they warned me, they said, "It there is a chance that your voice will be changed forever. Like if we, if, if anything goes wrong, which we're not gonna, you know, we hope that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but if there is something that goes wrong, you could lose your voice. Like mm. this is like, it will be changed forever. Mm -hmm. um, there have been cases of that. And so I'm mad. Like I'm, I remember going to, the chapel and being just crying and being angry. I was like, God, what the heck? Like mm -hmm. you have given me this voice and like, I, like I want to use it. And like, this is who I am. I'm nothing without my voice. What am I going to do without my voice? And it was in the, that prayer that s slowly he re revealed to me like, Catherine, are you using your gifts and talents to glorify you and to live in the world? Mm -hmm. Are you using your gifts and talents to glorify me and to build the kingdom? Yeah. And ultimately, mm -hmm. your identity isn't in anything that you can do. Your identity is rooted in me. Mm -hmm. And in time and through my love, I want you to be able to accept that, to see that, and to then live in that identity. Because you are not what you are. Like, you mm -hmm. can sing, but that's not your identity. And that really got me thinking to... If there's anything, like even if you both, like right now, just think to yourself, if there's something that you really, really love, if that was taken away from you tomorrow, would you be okay? If the answer is no, like you think a lot of people think of their jobs or hobbies that they like, right? If that was taken away tomorrow, would you be okay? The answer is no, then you've found identity in that. And your identity isn't in that. Mm -hmm. Your identity is rooted in heaven, which is constant. And you, you know, so this kind of uh, mindset of identity and going from I'm, I'm having to be put on masks and be different people for different friend groups. And the Lord just slowly through time working with me of, of calling me back to him, showing me that my identity is rooted in him, rooted in heaven. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's. I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> no, it was really good. And that brought up a really good point of like when your identity isn't, you know, if something's taken away, it can be like a hobby or a job, but yeah. it also it could also be a person, like a yes. significant other, which is, you know, something that's really, really mm -hmm. good. But if you're a using gift. that as an idol, technically, yep. like that's also not okay. Right. And that's mm -hmm. not good either. Um, that's hard. Yeah. That's super hard. My mom always told me, at night and she still does in night prayer she'd be like thank you god for the gift of catherine she doesn't belong to me but uh, you've loaned her to me and i'm gonna get her back to you and just having that mindset you know of, mm -hmm. it, it's true though people are yeah. definitely easy jobs i think hobbies people careers mm -hmm. are really easy to set your identity in because the world again like we have holy desires we we have identities 
And in a broken world, those desires and those identities get twisted. And the world is telling us, right? And I'm a living, breathing testimony of this, of chasing after, trying to seek out and find who I am and my identity and what I'm created for and mm -hmm. all of these things. And it's it's simple. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we make it so much more difficult because we find fulfillment when the world congratulates us for what we can do and how mm -hmm. much money we have and how many friends we have and how many followers we have like that's where the world is telling us this is where your worth comes from this yeah. is your identity and jesus is like yo <laughs> not true yeah <laughs> so yeah We've got something special for all our Catholic organizations. Now, before you skip past this part, it's not an ad. It's more like an incredible opportunity to take your digital presence to the next level. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Something only for our podcast listeners. We, DM Productions, have a two-day Catholic social media makeover course. It's an online course specifically made for Catholic organizations. It will take your social media to the next level. And... We make it easier than ever with our step-by-step -step video walkthroughs, cheat sheets, customizable templates, and more. Catholic organizations, let's start creating the quality and results that secular businesses have, but with the depth and beauty of Catholicism. Oh, and did I mention the price? $700. But remember I said I was gonna let you in on a little secret? Use code DMPODCAST to get it completely free. No credit card required, just pop that code in and you're all set head over to www.dm.productions slash social media makeover or click the link in the description. Now back to the show. I want to get into like the relationship end of... Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so, um, I don't even know where it starts, Yeah, honestly, college. But, yeah. okay, so could you just tell yeah. us about relationship when you were in college and yeah, how that started? Absolutely. Um, so we met, I was in a relationship. <laughs> in college. Her Dama doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I told Cassidy about this a little bit, but Dom, you don't Did know. Did you date before? Yes. So okay. we met freshman year. We became best friends. We were best friends all through college. And so we we were really close. He knew all of my faults. He was with me as I was living very much so in the world, mm -hmm. making a lot of mistakes. Um getting involved with just not great things and he loved me through it and so it kind of got to the point where and this took me a lot of reflection because he he's a good guy um but in my own spirituality and my own life at that time i was really falling into the lie of no one's ever gonna love you because of your past and he loves you, so he's the one. Mm -hmm. And you guys have a great relationship and he is your best friend. And like, this makes sense. You know, like mm -hmm. you don't ever have to change, right? <laughs> like you can continue to live you, this sinful life because yeah. it's comfortable. And um, we ended up dating the end of junior year during COVID. We're a COVID relationship. <laughs> and uh, then after COVID, we had senior year together dating. And then I was, I was accepted to a program back in Milan, Italy, and I was planning to go get my master's over there. But because of the circumstances of the world at that time, Europe was closed. <laughs> so, uh, we were thinking, well, we don't want to do long distance. So we're just, what What are we able to do? Mm -hmm. Like, how can we stay together? Because I don't really want to move back to Ohio and, uh, you know, face all that. And so we thought, okay, well, if you go to grad school, then I'll go to grad school. I'll follow you wherever you go. We can move move down, down wherever together. We ended up moving to Texas. Um, and... Then once you graduate your two year program, then we'll get married, we'll go to Europe and then, you know, kind of switch. So that's what we did. Um, I actually had a dream that I was singing in the desert. <laughs> and In this dream, I woke up and I was like, oh, OK, we're moving to Arizona or Texas, because <laughs> at the time that's the Texas to me was desert. I had never been there. It's not. <laughs> desert not all of it is desert but we did move down there and we again i'm 
seeking i'm searching i'm living for the world and so we did move in together we got a place together against my family's <laughs> wishes and desires for me um but we were like you know like it'll be okay we'll get separate rooms <laughs> but we'll just be glorified roommates basically um and i mean it, it was on paper it was nice but i also definitely think living together is part of what caused our separation ultimately because you're we were living like we were married but we're mm -hmm. not married yeah <laughs> and yeah. so we don't have the graces of the sacrament and anyway so we moved down really funny i've always been involved with life teen my first birthday as a one-year-old was at a life night with all the teenagers <laughs> singing happy birthday to baby <laughs> catherine uh my mom's been a youth minister for 21 years uncle's been a youth minister for like 22 23 years grandparents youth ministers so youth ministry has run in the family mm -hmm. when we get down to texas i'm like oh i'm gonna be a normal catholic whatever that looks like <laughs> and I, i'm gonna go to mass without a youth program i'm gonna go to mass like a normal catholic mm -hmm. like a good catholic i google catholic church near me i look up on my phone oh there's one five minutes from our house that's great saint mark we drive over to saint mark and we sit down i will never forget I'm sitting in this pew. I'm excited to have just like a normal mass, right? And the cantor comes up to the mic and says, welcome everyone to St. Mark Catholic Church to our life teen mass. <laughs> I kid you not, I look up at the crucifix. I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing? How I can't escape. I literally come all the way down to a different, co a different country, a different state, and I cannot escape. Um, after Mass, the lady sitting in front of me turns to me and is like, you have a great voice. You should sing and canter here. And I was like, oh. so I end up, she ended up taking my hand, bring that Southern hospitality, brings me over to the canter. He's <laughs> like, uh, well, you got to go talk to the youth minister. And I'm looking at Jesus like, here we go. Oh here we go. Gosh. I go up to the youth minister um, and I'm introduce myself. I'd be interested in singing here, you know, getting it more involved with church again. Cause at this point I had fallen away and I'm thinking, well, might as well now start kind of getting back involved and in what better way than to sing, you know? Mm -hmm. And long story short, I ended up being the youth minister there at St. Mark. Um, and well, that was such a blessing. It was just these little things of moments of Jesus placing these open doors for me to just walk through um, and claiming me back. And through that too, because working in the church, I definitely was like, okay, I am living in sin right now and in the eyes of the church and in the eyes of the community, I don't want to set this example for the teens mm -hmm. so of, you know, living with someone before you're married. So that was really hard, but we, that also definitely rocket launched, uh, my faith into leading more of my lifestyle because now I have a role to play and so I we definitely did end up living very separately um he had his half of the house I had my half of the house which also causes internal issues with the relationship well fast forward we end up getting engaged uh that following summer and that was kind of the beginning of the end in a sense uh my parents are divorced his parents are divorced we really, really wanted to avoid divorce. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Recommend that for all married couples to <laughs> avoid, avoid divorce. divorce. <laughs> and um, so I, I knew a lot of the baggage that I had. I knew a lot of the trauma and things that I didn't want to bring into a marriage. And being faced with the reality of like, we're preparing now to become walking sacraments. Like, like as a married couple... We should be bringing people into the church because mm -hmm. of our, you know, relationship. Yeah. And right now we are not doing that. And there's some things I need to work through. There are definitely things that he needs to work through. So we got into couples therapy to kind of dig deeper into healing these things. On top of couples therapy, we were doing the pre uh pre-cana yeah. classes the natural family planning classes we were meeting with a couple we were fully preparing but as we prepared more and more the lord revealed more and more of like Catherine, do you trust me 
Like, are you mm. really, really, really willing to surrender? Because your desires that you have to be a wife, to be a mom, to work in ministry, um, these are holy desires to mm -hmm. sing. However, you're still seeking all of these things through the world. You are still seeking to find all this fulfillment through what the world is telling you will fulfill you. And I need to know, Catherine, are you willing to surrender everything for me to lead you down to green pastures to, mm -hmm. to heal all of this? You have to surrender it to me. So we just came to a point where thankfully it was a pretty mutual decision um, where he recognized by the grace of God that he wasn't ready for marriage. I wasn't ready at that moment. I don't think looking back, it was, there's a lot of factors. We just, we really realized fundamentally we had different values at mm -hmm. our core. Like I, the, the Lord really was like claiming me back and I was diving head into the faith and where he was at the time, he wasn't really ready for that. And so, when two people are seeking seeking heaven, they're gonna ultimately grow closer together. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I was really seeking heaven and he wasn't ready for that. So we just kind of started going in very separate directions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we, we separated, which was very difficult because at this moment, right, we're planning a wedding. We have a friend group together. We have a dog together. I'm planning to go to Europe. So all of my dreams, desires, hopes, plans, they're all planned out. Like the five-year plan, 10-year plan is ready to go. Um, I I have a church community in Texas. We have a house together. Um, I, I didn't have a car at the time, so we had a car together. Like all of these things, like it was perfect on paper. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was just like, do you trust me? Like, really? Like, do you really trust me? Mm -hmm. um, so in May, we, we, had, we had called things off much early on and we had moved the wedding. We had the wedding planned for September of 2023, but we had moved that um, early, early January is when we really were like, okay, maybe we push it a little farther. We continue to work on this, keep trying, making this work. Let's force this to happen. Uh, we'll move the wedding. But by definitely by May, it was very clear to both of us that th we got to stop trying. <laughs> this is not, this is not working. Um, and so, yeah, um, I ended up surrendering it out. I went to Kansas city for a retreat, which uh, it was really cool. I was one of the speakers there. And I remember I went to confession and I'm pouring my heart out to this priest of how angry I am at God because if I really walk away, like I, I have walked away, but now physically walking away, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we were we were separated, we were done, but I, we were still physically together, right? So it was just hard to do a clean cut break. Mm -hmm. Um I'm telling the priest all this and he goes, okay, the Lord has placed on my heart to tell you he wants you to be present to him and to trust him. So I want you to go, your penance is to do 25 Jesus I trust in you's and to reflect on what it means to be present. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I go, I sit down, we're in adoration. So I'm in front of the blessed sacrament and I just get lost in time. And I'm just reflecting because as I think about what does it mean to be present, I'm like, this could be a million different things. Like, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be present? Lord, what does it mean for me to be present to you, for you to be present to me? Like, I know the obvious in the Eucharist and like in prayer, but like, really like reveal to me, Lord, what this looks like and to trust you. Like, okay. So I'm sitting there praying um, we're at a monastery, so there's monks everywhere. And a monk comes and sits next to me and he's like, can I pray with you? And I was like, sure. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> and he ended up sitting, sitting there and we were talking. He did not, I didn't tell him anything mm -hmm. of what I was going through at that moment. And out of the blue, he stops and he goes, the Lord has just placed something. The Holy Spirit has placed something on my heart to tell you. 
He wants you to be present to him and to trust him. I That's said, crazy. I said, Father, what? <laughs> um, did you just talk to your other buddy over there? Because he told me the same thing. And he was like, no, like I just came from, you know. And so he goes, this is a sign you need to go sleep on this. Go. The Lord is clearly telling you to be present to him and to trust him. What does that look like? Mm hmm. I go back to my room. I, I'm in Kansas for this retreat still. Um, wake up in the morning. One of the missionaries there, he has this charism of prophecy. And I know this isn't how it works, but me being me and goofy and weird, I walk up to him and I'm like, yo, let's put your charism to the test. And he was like, that's not how that works. But what do you need? Uh, I told him, can you ask the Holy Spirit for a message for me? You don't need to know what I'm going through. But ask the Lord for a message for me. And get back to me. And he's like, yeah, I can go pray for you real quick. So he goes, I, I literally watch him walk, do like a circle, go like this, look over back at me and then walk back very quickly, walks back to me and goes, you must be in good favor with the Lord because I actually got a message for you. And I was like, <laughs> okay, this ought to be good. <laughs> what is it? He goes, I don't know what you're going through. But the Lord wants you to know that he wants you to be present to him and to trust him. I'm bawling <laughs> because this was just like, okay, Lord, I'm being called to surrender everything to you. My lifestyle, my friends, my car, my job, my community, my dreams, my, my future career, my school, my house, my dog. Literally, if I walk away from this relationship and I be fully present to you, and fully trust you, everything that I knew, everything that I had planned is going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's do this. <laughs> I went back, we packed up the house and our lease was up and I went back to Cleveland and he went back to his family um, in Chicago and we finally were fully separated and I spent the next three months in very beautiful prayerful solitude um just hitting this head on because i did feel for a lack of better words i felt like the lord had taken everything from me well in a sense sure because he was like in order for me to give you the abundance that i want to you gotta let go of the stuff that mm -hmm. you have in your hands mm -hmm. um but it was during that time i in prayer, I had this image that came to me. I'm, I'm a little girl in a car seat having a temper tantrum. And I'm sitting like, come on, let's go. I'm all strapped in, you know, and I'm like, let's go. I want to go. I want to go. I want to get to the destination. I have all these dreams. Let's do it. Why aren't we driving? And then my heavenly father, who's driving the car and is gentle and kind, he turns with me to me and he looks at me in the back seat with just gentleness and he looks at me and he says i know i'm taking you there but we're at a red light and it's not safe for me to drive but do you trust me that i will get you to that destination and do you surrender to being the child and me being the driver <laughs> Like, be my passenger princess, please, you yeah. know? And so that was just really like this, this pivotal moment of like really diving into what it means to be present, to find my identity rooted in him. Because truly it's through my relationship with him that I found my identity. And now he's revealing to me my, my mission. He's mm -hmm. revealing to me what his plans are and really reflecting on, Jeremiah 29, 11, your classic for I know the plans I have for you. Really trusting like, Lord, do I being faced with that question? Do I really trust that you have good plans for me, mm -hmm. that you do have better plans? Um, another thing that this was beautiful during these prayerful. I'm, and again, I'm frequenting the sacraments. I am diving in. I'm hitting this sadness and this confusion and this what felt like darkness and this season of waiting and this season of brokenness. I'm hitting it head on and falling into the feet at the feet of Jesus, just mm -hmm. letting him heal because he's the only one who can. And during this time, my mom got me this really beautiful picture of this little girl. And she has like 
tears in her eyes and she's got this beautiful flower in her hands and she's kind of like looking down and kind of sad and holding on tightly to this flower and Jesus is knelt down eye level with her and he's got this huge bouquet of flowers behind his back and he's looking at her mm -hmm. and in this picture it's it's so clear that he's asking the little girl do you trust me hand me this flower because I have so much more for you mm -hmm. And so I was really just praying through this this season. I, I really spent those months of spiritual direction, healing, praying for that my previous fiance, uh, pr uh, just praying for healing in his own life. And I know that I was suffering. He had to have been too. And just trusting that ultimately I'm not savior. He is savior. Mm -hmm. And through my surrender and obedience, I'm going to allow him to be God <laughs> and I, I'm not God. He is God and that his plans are better, that I can trust him, that being present to him, that living for him, that's really where I'm going to find my fulfillment and live life to the fullest. And mm -hmm. so I spent those months of season of waiting, season of stillness and season of presence. And here I am now today getting to now see, I feel like where I'm at today, the Lord is handing me that bouquet that I handed him that flower and over the past few months he's just been giving me bouquet after bouquet after bouquet and I can see his fulfillment now mm -hmm. like I see his plan and I see how he's been working in my life so clearly since high school like yeah. we're getting like 15 years of my life I have seen how I have been walking in the world and he's just like Re constantly rerouting me and just healing every every brokenness, every wound. Um, at the beginning, we mentioned earlier too of how I was running from things, mm -hmm. thinking like, "Oh, that that part of me, these sins are not able to be loved." Yeah. Uh, there's been a few times where, in prayer, Jesus has brought me to different places, different memories that I have like blocked out, mm -hmm. and He has walked with me into those moments and has revealed to me where he was during those times like he has revealed to me where he was when i thought i was all alone and he's reminded me like you were never alone mm -hmm. i was always with you i was always present to you i was always mm -hmm. calling you to be mine you've always you are anointed you are mine you have authority in my name you are my daughter you are my beloved and even when you didn't feel my presence even when you were seeking comfort in a world that couldn't comfort you, I was just waiting. And now I'm taking you back to these moments. I'm taking you back to these painful memories and showing you that I'm going to heal all of that. Mm -hmm. All of those things that you don't love about yourself or you didn't like about yourself or those insecurities, I was there through it all. And now that you're in a season of presence and trust with me, I'm going to heal and show you that I love all of it. Like, mm -hmm. like I was with you during it all. That's what presence means. That's what living for me means and not for a world, but living yeah. with me and through me and for me. Yeah. There's my tangent. <laughs> <laughs> now, and you had mentioned this like at a girl's night at some point where, um, you know, you're like this, you know, obviously the marriage didn't work out. Like, Oh, Jesus, obviously, religious life. Oh, yeah. Could you explain yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. And I I heard a talk from, I think it was at a Steubenville conference, but I heard a talk from a, a priest who said, if you are single, like, before you get married, discern everything. Like, don't just say, like, oh, I'm not called to religious life because I want a family. Like, well, have you discerned it? Like, really, like, what is your discernment like? And so... I was in a place during those months of healing where I'm like, well, I went through marriage prep. I prepared my mind, body, soul for being a wife and a mother, and it didn't work out. So clearly, Lord, that's not what I'm called to. I'm called to be your bride. That's amazing. And I love you so much. And you've brought me to this place of healing that like I want to lay my life down for you. I want to be your bride. And so I figured out of trust. You know, if I was called to marriage, which at the time I didn't think I was, but if I was really called to marriage, then what would happen is I'm just going to date Jesus. I'm going to pursue only him. I'm only going to dance with Jesus type of thing. And if I trust him enough to know that his plans are better than anything I could ever imagine for myself, and he's not going to allow me to do anything that he doesn't 
want for me. If I stay so close to his sacred heart that and keep my eyes totally fixated on him, it gives him control to drive the car and to mm-hmm. lead me to where he needs me to go. And so I trusted him enough that if I pursued only him and pursued religious life, if it wasn't for me, then he was going to make that clear. He was going to put someone in my life that was meant for me. I was giving him control of being God over my life, which is who he is. <laughs> um, so yeah, I pursued that. I was doing like come and sees and mm-hmm meeting really often for coffee with some of the Mercedarian sisters too. Love them. And meeting with Sisters of Providence, um, the Byzantine also order. Mm -hmm. uh, What is it? The sake, the Christ the Bridegroom. Christ the Bridegroom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just really kind of discerning is religious life for me. Could I see myself being a part of this community? Yada, yada. And along the way, the Lord brought someone into my life very unexpectedly and i remember like <laughs> going to chapel and be like please get this distraction out <laughs> of my life because i am marrying you jesus and he was like when are you gonna stop trying to control everything like did you ever consider for a moment that i was preparing you for marriage that i was preparing mm-hmm. you but you were with the wrong person like you weren't you were still in ways living for the world and not for me and not letting me guide you and lead you and everything that you go through has purpose like i make all things new so even that suffering all of those things you went through had purpose have you considered that maybe you are called to be a bride but to this man (laughs) that i am now you're allowing me to place into your life like remember what you said before you're gonna date me until (laughs) you know and i still in ways date Jesus of course I always will but yeah it's that surrender and trust and being present to his heart that's what that call to stillness is Mm -hmm. um I feel like I'm ranting so much but no no it's so good (laughs) uh I recently I talked with one of the Mercedarian sisters who I I'm really close with I I adore her and she's helped me in so many ways but I was telling her like two weeks ago, I was telling her about how I feel that the Lord has called me to stillness in a lot of ways, still, stillness, still, <laughs> and that I get in my head about like what that looks like because yeah. I, I do, I'm at a, I'm a place in my spiritual journey and in my faith life that I, I want to live solely for heaven and, and build the kingdom and no more living for the world. I'm going to, you know, I'm living for Jesus. I am his warrior. Mm -hmm. Uh, intercession of St. Jonah Ark, you know, like, uh, and this call to stillness, like, what does that mean? Because I struggle to like actually sit still. And then I get this voice in my head of like, oh, you're not living in the will of the father because you're not sitting still and you're not taking time to just like, um, like be totally still. And this Mercedarian sister, she told me, she was like, Catherine, stillness is not just physical stillness Mm -hmm. it's stillness of heart so that means keeping your heart attuned to his your desires with his uniting everything to him because she's like right now i'm walking and talking to you on the phone and i'm not being still but my heart is still Mm -hmm. what voice are you listening to that's telling you what stillness is are you listening to the voice of god who is telling you and guiding you in what stillness means Or are you listening to your voice or Satan's voice telling you, you trying to define what stillness is? Like, Mm -hmm. again, another area of like letting the Lord lead you, letting the Lord guide you. So, yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So, you know, you're discerning religious life now and this person gets brought into your life and you're like, excuse me, like, please move. Yes, you are (laughs) interrupting. And like just how does that go from there yeah oh my goodness um faced with a lot of holy fears you know we talked a little bit too at girls night about what fear looks like Mm -hmm. um that was so good yeah it was so good (laughs) (laughs) but there is there definitely is a difference between like fear love casts out all fear like bad fear where that that fear kind of comes from control and feeling out of control 
Mm -hmm. um but then there's also this fear of like okay lord like you are leading me and i have to blindly be led and trust you that's a holy fear of like surrendering um and so yeah he this man came into my life and as i went i went through marriage prep and all of these things and the couples therapy and i had all of this knowledge and also i learned so much from that that past relationship of what are fundamental things that i am not willing to settle for like mm -hmm. like I, I i do want a catholic man i want someone to lead me into heaven and someone who is so in tune with the holy spirit that i want to be obedient to that leadership right mm -hmm. and you know submissive submissive yeah, yes <laughs> but like i i will submit my life to jesus and if i want my husband to be so in tune to the holy spirit that i trust <laughs> i trust that he I don't know what that is was. leading me it's probably like a fuzz mm -hmm. oh, thank you <laughs> I um, continue. but yeah he I, I i asked very early on some tough questions and so did he and something I'll never forget is when we were just like FaceTiming and getting to know each other. Um, I told him like, I take this discernment very seriously because like I've gone through this before and I'm not going through it again. And I want to make sure that you really, you're not just a Christian man, but you're a God fearing man because there is a difference. Yeah, there is, and there is. I need a God fearing man. I want to make sure you love Jesus more than me and you know, all that kind of stuff and how I'm the one discerning all this stuff. And his response was, I'm discerning too. I'm discerning you. I like like I'm also praying about this, Catherine, you know? Mm -hmm. You you aren't in control of all of, you know, like I'm also talking to Jesus. He's also my wingman, you know? And um just slowly getting to know him more. Yeah. Um he bef before we met in person, he went to adoration and laid prostrate in front of the monstrance and was like, all right, I'm surrendering whatever this is to you, Lord. You're the best wingman. If this is of you, then open the doors. And if this mm -hmm. is not, like put obstacles in the way. And that has been our prayer throughout our relationship is like, even as we get closer, we keep in prayer saying, Lord, if this isn't of you, if anything in our relationship is not of you, remove it like make it abundantly clear make sure that our hearts are solely focused on you and he has well this this man has definitely healed a lot within me um and has healed me by leading me closer to christ mm -hmm. and i've always heard like you know two people like in a marriage right you should both be walking like seeking heaven jesus should be at the center of your relationship and to me that meant like okay you both share a faith and then like there's jesus in the middle but in this relationship i'm learning more and more of like keeping jesus at the center means that i am actively working on my relationship i'm actively seeking heaven mm -hmm. and being shaped and molded and transformed by that that unconditional love of the father and so is he and together we're getting closer to christ yeah. and leading each other by our own faith journey closer by just our examples and it's been it's been really beautiful it's been a blessing uh it is a blessing still and i'm at a point where i do i i definitely do believe that his plans are better because there's no way I could have planned where I'm at now and make it any better than it already is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With so many blessings. Yeah. I don't know if you want to get into this, but at girls night a couple months ago, um, you had said like when, when you know, you know, and yeah. you got so upset at people that would say that because you're like, no, you, you don't know <laughs> yeah. like, this didn't work out for me. And now like your mind shifted on. That. Oh, totally. Can you kind of explain? Oh that? my goodness. Let's see if I can explain this. <laughs> I, so I was getting really upset with when people would say, when you know, you know, like with my previous relationship, oh, how, like, how did you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, I, I don't really know, actually. Oh, you can never answer the question. Like, I don't, right, because like, mm -hmm. I, I love him, 
we're best friends. We have all these plans, but there's a lot of fundamental differences here. And like, I have a lot of doubts. I have a lot of fears. I have a lot of confusion, but like, during that relationship is really hard for me to discern whether or not we were going through like spiritual warfare because our relationship was going to be so holy and like bring people to heaven and that like we're doing all the hard work now so that our marriage is going to be flawless <laughs> and yeah. so like there's there was that aspect or like trying to discern is this relationship like there's obstacles being placed in front of us because this isn't a relationship that the Lord wants. Like mm -hmm. is this spiritual warfare or is this God placing obstacles? Like w it was hard. It was a lot of discernment. So when people asked me, how do you know he's the one I would be like, don't ask me. <laughs> like, I don't know. And I would get different answers from different people. When I would ask that question, like some people were like, well, you know, there is, you do work and I guess you never really know, but in a sense you do know. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, I don't, I don't have this feeling. Now, fast forward to the relationship I'm in now. I have this immense peace, mm -hmm. calmness, stillness of heart and trust because I, I know who his best friend is i know who is leading him mm -hmm. who is jesus <laughs> ultimately and i like i just have immense peace like when we first met i truly i f i like saw my future and i was like whoa whoa what is happening <laughs> and the lord is just like here's that bouquet <laughs> like here's like mm -hmm. Like keep just walking forward and in discernment, that's really what I'm learning is w living your life for Christ and living your life in his will is doing the next best thing in love, making the next choice because the, because God's love and his will is moving. Like the, the Trinity is never still they're constantly at at work there there's never a day off type of thing like god is always moving and so love is always moving love is always flowing and satan wants you to be still and isolated in the sense of like don't make a choice be be succumb to your fears and don't move don't do anything rash and with this relationship that i have it was just so clear that love was moving like the holy spirit was there and that i was being called to be my most authentic self and to just make the next best choice in love and that was just doing day by day getting growing closer to each other getting each other closer to to heaven to christ to having these beautiful theological conversations together praying to to with and over each other um just really really being led by that the movement of the trinity mm -hmm. yeah and so what was like the time frame from like when you met him to yeah. like the relationship now? So my, it was so, it's tricky because we called things off for the wedding. We called everything off early 2023, but then because we were still living together and like literally separate ends of the house, <laughs> like it's hard you know, and so we there would be days where like, we're going to keep trying. And then it's like, no, what are we doing? We're going to, you know, call mm -hmm. everything's still off. And mm -hmm. um, so we called all of that. I like to say for sure, for sure, it was May. Um, and then I moved back to Cleveland in June. And then I spent June, July, August in just that solitude, prayer, discernment, the season of waiting, spiritual direction, diving into the sacraments seeking that healing seeking understanding um diving into scripture good golly so much the word is alive y'all and <laughs> so beautiful and then i get a message on my birthday hey happy birthday and i was like who is this guy i'm becoming a nun next you know like <laughs> i just was like thanks thx like <laughs> like was not interested then in october end of october he, he reached out again and we just started talking ever since um that uh, like around halloween ish a little before like a week or two before halloween mm -hmm. and 
then come November, we started studying the Rescue Project together. Have you heard of the Rescue Project with Father John Ricardo? No, I haven't. It's really good. Y'all should check it out. It's really, really good. But we started FaceTiming and doing this study together and just growing in the faith and then getting to know each other more through the lens of Catholicism and like making sure that Christ, you know, is that center. And then he officially asked me to be his girlfriend in January, on January 3rd of 2024. So very recently. Um, but he's been very respectful too because he knows like I do, I care a lot about the man I was previously with. Like he's a good man and he was my best friend and ultimately I don't want to hurt him. But at the same time, there does come a point where it's like I do need to move forward fully. The Lord is is clearly closing one door mm -hmm. and has opened another and... I got to continue on this path of being present, of trusting and surrendering and making the next best discernment move out of love where I feel that the Lord is calling. And so, yeah, that was, it's been recent. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty, pretty quick, and but like good. And you have all this peace just from yeah. that short time span. Even in, even in the the busyness and it's it feels it looks i totally get like from the outside it looks so quick this new relationship but there's so much peace like there's just there's peace that doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. there's healing there's goodness there's beauty um christ is really present like i see i see jesus in this man mm -hmm. so often like every time I'm with him, I feel like I get just a little sliver of the unconditional love of the father. And that's what's given me so much peace. And he feels the same, you know, and it's it is wild <laughs> to see just again, this like the image of giving the little girl, giving the flower and the bouquet. I'm in this season mm -hmm. of receiving these bouquets from the heavenly father. And he is, this man is definitely a bouquet. <laughs> He's a big old beautiful bouquet of flowers. <laughs> it's also long distance, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's in Texas, which is ironic because I left Texas. Mm. Um, yeah. He's back in Texas, but we're making it work. And distance is also beautiful because at the rate of our relationship, we are moving very quickly. Distance is forcing us to get to know each other very quickly and communicate really well and mm -hmm. there's we we right off the bat are asking the very difficult questions and the future oriented questions and um really diving in um which I don't think we would have done as much if we were in the same town because then we could slowly date you know what I mean and Again, the spirit is moving. He is on the move. And uh, this distance has been, it's been difficult, but it's been a blessing. Definitely, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess like my thought is like, if, um, I don't know if this is devil's advocate or something, <laughs> yeah. but like if you were like engaged to someone yeah. that you were with like physically right. all the time. Yeah. Like, and the difference between that relationship, like, Mm -hmm. You didn't even know and you were right in front of it right. until somebody that's like, you know, halfway across the country yeah. and you meet and yep. Sorry. That means I'm saying like a lot. <laughs> um, but I don't have to point out everything that I'm doing either. I could just pick that off and like, tap you. You <laughs> okay. don't have to mention. Thank you. I'm trying to stop saying like so much. You catch me too. I probably <laughs> say like a lot. No, I actually haven't noticed it. Oh, nice. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Anyways, so from that relationship being right in front of you yeah. to somebody that the relationship's mm -hmm. moving relatively quickly and you're not even, you know, right. seeing each other on a day-to-day yeah. -day basis, let alone a weekly basis, but you're talking yep. over the phone. Like, has that made any difference in... This is exactly where I can see God's providence, see his divine plan of if it wasn't for everything that I went through in growing in trust and growing in knowing how to fully surrender and to trust, I mean, I fully surrender is, you know, we're all growing in that, but like learning really how to trust him and his plans 
and knowing what is of him, if it wasn't for everything that I went through, I wouldn't be so confident in this situation where I am now Mm -hmm. with this relationship because I trust that the Lord is clearly, I see it. I hear it from other people that this relationship, like they are witnessing the fruits of this relationship and that I can, I can tangibly see God's love here and that he is working here. So it's through the guidance and he's taught me how to love, love and trust. So now I can love and trust in this relationship and the distance. uh, I mean, that was a question of like a back of my head of like, well, I thought I was so sure before. How can I be so sure now? And the difference is Christ is in the center here. Mm -hmm. Christ is the one guiding. I was in the driver's seat and I was the one trying to control. And now I've surrendered control and things are just happening. Things are good, true, beautiful and holy. And there's peace. There's no confusion. There's no doubts. There's peace. There's stillness of heart. And it's through this relationship that I feel closer to heaven. I feel like I'm learning what my mission is. I'm learning more about my my identity rooted in heaven. Whereas in this other relationship, I was so I was so holding on to that steering wheel. Like I was not willing to be led by the spirit because of fear and in this like in that sense of fear like love does cast out all fear Mm -hmm. and i i witnessed that in where i am now so the distance as much as it really stinks because of course i want to be with him i think that it's really making us stronger and i even though i might not understand it i have witnessed my lack of understanding coming to fulfillment to a point where God does allow me to understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm so I'm in a, maybe I don't understand right now why we are long distance, why he came into my life when he did. But I believe that one day I will understand why. Mm -hmm. And the trust that I now have, that I know how to trust the Lord. I have that trusting the Lord that this relationship is of him. And we have, I continue every day to surrender this relationship to God and to, re- to surrender that, like, if this isn't of you, like, I trust you enough knowing that you are all powerful, almighty, all seeing. So if this relationship isn't of you, you're not going to lead me somewhere that you don't want me. Mm-hmm. So that trust, again, of having that relationship with the Lord, trusting that this is good, true, and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did that during our engagement of, like, if, you don't want us together you're you know break us apart yeah like separate us and you know we're together so it worked. <laughs> <laughs> we work together yeah um but what did your family and friends think about you being in a new relationship after yeah i think that's also a key part of the story as well can i stretch my yeah, legs yeah, yeah, out of i've been i don't know how long we've been talking <laughs> Sorry, my feet are just like <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> okay, here. There we go. Um yeah, the that was that's a of a, a fear again. That was definitely something I was worried about of like how is this going to look to the world? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, how is this going to look to the outside people? And again, when when something is of God, if God wants something to happen, nothing's going to get in the way of that. And so all of those worries of like, oh my gosh, like what are people going to think? Um, honestly, every single person who also that, that is really close to me, they were overjoyed. They were like, yeah, like we trust you because we know your relationship with the Lord. Like we trust that you're being led by the spirit. Um, and so the, I was, I was, and I still am in some ways, like worried about what this is going to look like to the world. But then I look at the gospel and the gospel tells us if you are, living for me you should look contrary to what the world expects if you're living for me the world should look at you and be like what in the world like we should stand out we Mm -hmm. should look different if you're living for christ we're not gonna look like what the world thinks we should look like we should stand out our timing is gonna look different than the world's timing our life our jobs our careers our vocation like everything is gonna look different when it's rooted in christ because it's light it's light and opposing darkness you know Mm -hmm. so that that's given me a lot of peace of like okay lord like your the world's timeline is kind of linear like this and your timeline is straight to heaven so like (laughs) 
I want to hop on that train, whatever <laughs> that, you know, whatever I surrender that timing to you, which is hard because again, that's an aspect of control. And every day he's just, the Lord is guiding me into surrendering more and more and, and showing me how to love. It's been beautiful. Yeah. Anything rooted with him. Good. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to ask? I think any questions? Are... I don't know. I just have, I guess, a huge amount of empathy for the fact that you had all that stuff planned. Mm. And then, in my mind, that is the hardest thing oh, is yeah. it's already all happening. So, yeah, you had stick, like a wedding date stick and everything. To the, too. You're already on the train, you paid yeah. for the ticket, you're going to the destination. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just imagining people ignoring any signs mm -hmm. or anything and just they're like, we're just going. Right. It's already set. Mm -hmm. We can't, how can we cancel? It's yeah. already there. We already yep, told yep. family. It's all, all the invites are out. So like, how do you, what advice do you tell people that are in yeah. a, Maybe not exactly the same spot, but they're in general it's planned yeah. and mm -hmm. they're kind of getting mm -hmm. little hints here and there. God wants you to plan like he wants you to make choices for your life. But it's hard when if you don't have a relationship with him, then if you're making these decisions out of your own, you know, maybe broken desires or whatever it, it it comes down to relationship i would say if you're discerning anything in your life like you have things set in stone or you're feeling like this is what i want this is why i want it like first come to recognize that the lord understands your desires much more than you could even imagine like he he already knows what you want and he knows where you want to be but do you trust knowing that like the greatest thing, the greatest desire that you could ever imagine, he has something better. And are you, are you willing to surrender those dreams and desires to be purified in that love? And if the answer is no, that's okay. But to start with that, because mm -hmm. it really is all about relationship. You, when you have that relationship and you're spending quality time with the Lord, that could look like talking to him while you're brushing your teeth. That could look like going on walks, being able to recognize more Christ in other people, uh, seeing Christ or, or in the nature, whatever it could be, but just building that relationship. Once you become more aware of seeing, being able to see where Jesus is, seeing where God's hand is at work, then in these bigger decisions, big or small, you're going to be able to see God's hand. You're going to be able to see, maybe this isn't of you, Lord. And ultimately, as much as we plan, which is good to make the plans, but then submit those plans to the Lord and allow him to purify, to either take away or to add, you know, he, I think it's really easy. I know at, at one point in my life, I thought like, well, God is this disciplining mean, angry father who doesn't want me to be happy because look at what he's done. He's taken everything away from me and God's like, that's actually the opposite. Like, I love you so much. I've created you for joy, like a joy that you couldn't even fathom heaven's joy. Like that's what you're created for. And the path that I have for you, the plans that I have for you, I want you to be able to get glimpses of that joy to prepare you for your the eternal joy of heaven. The, what I ultimately have planned for you, mm -hmm. do your plans align with that? Do your plans, are your plans fruitful are they bringing people closer to heaven building the kingdom because christ says the kingdom has already begun within us right like what does that mean in your own life and whatever these discernment plans are whether that's like going to college getting married buying a house picking a restaurant to eat breakfast at you know like the trinity's always moving like you never know like he's always at work and so whatever plans you have to keep them to keep them centered on on building the kingdom on your heavenly father's plans for you and, and being open to those plans changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was a really good question. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's powerful advice, too. <laughs> Thanks. It's a lot easier <laughs> said than done, though. That's mm -hmm. true. And I mean, if you have like a major life decision, like ending an engagement and canceling a wedding, like I did, <laughs> to embrace that sadness, because that was another thing that really for the first time in my life, I saw how the Lord was uniting his suffering to mine and how mm -hmm. because of his love for me, like he was weeping with me. Like he hurt so bad with me. Mm -hmm. He knew how badly I wanted that. He knew how badly more so than I can't even ma imagine because he created me. So he knows even more so the deepness of my desires. And so he's weeping. He's weeping with me. He was hurting with me. And he was holding me the whole time knowing like, I'm, I'm getting you through this. Like, keep me in, like, you've invited me into the boat. We're in the middle of the storm. I'm going to get us to the other side. Like, just mm -hmm. keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes focused on me. But to embrace that it's okay to be upset. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're not meant to understand everything. I, that's another aspect of control that I always, I want to know everything. I want to know why, 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 how, when, where. And a lot of the times God is like, let me be God. You go play in the sandbox out in the backyard with the dog. Like you be a child. Let me be father. Let me mm -hmm. love. Let me take care. Let me provide. You mm -hmm. just, you, you live in your child likeness. <laughs> you know, you trust me. Let me lead you. Mm -hmm. Have a temper tantrum in the little car seat. <laughs> you know, do what you need to do. But let me be your heavenly father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. I don't know what else. Like, I think that's just. That's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, um, my goodness. This was a blast. <laughs> I talked a shocker. Wow. <laughs> you handed me a mic and I just talked and talked and talked. <laughs> this is good. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course. Yeah, thank you. Until next time. Who knows? For real. Maybe we can be married next time. Oh, yeah. Whoa. That would be wild. <laughs> then y'all could meet him. Mm -hmm. Bring him on. Yeah. <laughs> this is the mystery man. <laughs> yeah.